Hi, it's Kevin. This is another amplifier video. This is an American DJV 2000 amplifier. Pretty powerful. It's a Class AB. It's got uh, 250 watts per channel RMS at 8 ohms. So it packs quite a punch. It's very, very heavy because it's got a nice linear power supply in it. So I bought this on eBay. Didn't say whether or not it worked and I really didn't care because I've always wanted one of these because I always thought that they were pretty well made. And um, Channel 2 works pretty decent, but Channel 1 has a hum on it. As you can see, with no signal feeding into it, I get a hum coming out of it. So, I think I'll hook the scope up to it and see what kind of signal I got coming out of it. So just bear with me for one second here. really see anything exciting coming out of the oscilloscope but uh, certainly not a clean signal compared to channel B which has nothing coming out of it at all so we're gonna crack this thing open take a look at it see what's going on my guess is that the uh, power supply for um, channel A is probably all messed up and uh, caps may be kind of weak so we'll take a look at the rails and see what's going on I took the top cover off and uh, this thing looks a little sick inside. Um, it's a little bit of corrosion in there. Looks like it may have been left out in the rain or something. But it's actually a pretty nice design. I, I mean, I can tell that decent engineering went into this. This is a nice, very heavy toroidal transformer. And this is really a true dual mono design. But uh, these, these filter caps on the rectified DC. They, they look like crap. They're, they're pretty well destroyed. It looks like the tops are bulging and they've just kind of seen better days. And my suspicion about the rails being messed up kind of was confirmed because this is the uh, negative voltage rail and as you can see it's not a nice DC waveform. It's kind of, a, <laughs> kind of an AC full wave rectified waveform with no capacitance whatsoever so I think what I'm gonna wind up doing is change out these caps for some nice new Panasonic or uh, Chemicon type caps because uh, these these just aren't gonna do the job they're they're spent and then I think once I replace some of the caps in here uh, kind of go pick up where I left off but uh, doesn't look like any crap is getting in through the um, input op amps but I guess that kind of remains to be seen I gotta kind of go one step at a time here and fix this power supply first and then I think I can pick up where I left off so stay tuned this one's gonna take a little while I went ahead and I took apart the V2000 amplifier as you can see it's got nothing in it now except the transformer which uh, I actually did take out to scoot the uh, transformer back so I can get the display board out only to realize that the front panel is removable but at this point it doesn't really matter so here's what I'm left with for the amplifier inside. So I went ahead and I grabbed my Fluke 287 so that I can measure high capacitances because my 117 only goes up to 9,999 microfarads. So I took the two capacitors out of the power supply for the left hand side and I'm going to make a quick measurement on these capacitors right now. Don't forget they should be 10,000 microfarads. That's what they say right on them. This one's still charged up. Let me reverse the polarity here. So I got 10.2 millifarads, which is 10,200 microfarads. So that's uh, pretty much right on the money. I mean, who knows what it actually does when the voltages are applied. Then I got this other capacitor from the negative rail supply here. And uh, let's take a look at what we got. So, <laughs> one microfarad's not going to do me any good. So, I'm going to have to get some new capacitors for this thing. I'm thinking of actually doing some calculations of the power supply and the current and everything. 
and deciding uh, maybe I'll hot rod this thing and put a little extra capacitance in there so it has more headroom. So uh, we will continue. So what I got here is a whole wagon full of parts from Mauser, a bunch of capacitors for this uh, amplifier. And what I did was I, I did some calculations and um, I found some filter caps, which by the way were very difficult to find in the size and capacitance and voltage rating that I wanted, but I managed to find some United Chemicon 12,000 microfarad 80 volt caps. So I did some math and according to my calculations here, I should be able to make about 337 watts without uh, when I start hitting clipping and that gives me about one and a half dB, almost one and a half dB of headroom. I also got this nice scope, new to me, Agilent. I highly recommend you pick one up. It's a 54622D. The A is the same thing. The D just has um, digital uh, logic pod capability so that you can use it as a logic analyzer. So it's a really nice uh, oscilloscope and I highly recommend you pick one up. I paid about $500 for this. And there's my torn apart amplifier and my Heiko 939 soldering station that I got from the refuse bin at my job. So, uh, looks like I got a whole bunch of parts that I got to change here. Oh yeah, one other thing was, uh, take a look at these uh, op amps here. They're kind of all over the place in the pre-driver stage and also in the uh, preamp and input board stages. And uh, they're pretty crappy. They, they have a really crappy signal to noise, or rather common mode rejection ratio of, that's a minimum of 70 dB. And although that sounds good, for an audio amplifier, it's really not. So, I picked up some Texas Instruments LM, what's the number here, 4562. And these have a common mode rejection ratio of a minimum of 110 dB. And they also have a much faster slew rate of 20 volts per microsecond versus... I don't know, these other ones are probably maybe half a volt per microsecond that are in there now. They're just glorified 741 op amps, which are just very basic, not that great op amps. So I'm going to change out those op amps, and uh, hopefully I improve the performance of this thing a little bit. But I'm going to replace all electrolytic caps. And one last thing, the two caps that were over here, I brought them to work and I measured them. One of them measured about 7,800 microfarads, and the other one measured 7 nanofarads with an ESR of about... Oh, I think it was 45K, and I did that with the uh, $30,000 Wayne Kerr component analyzer that we have. So it was interesting to see. I'll have to pull the other ones out and check them, too, and see what they were able to do. So uh, I'm going to start changing some parts. I'll be back. One other thing I forgot to mention about these caps is that these are all premium capacitors that I bought, with the exception of the filter caps on the power supply rails. These are all Panasonic uh, capacitors with a temperature rating of a minimum of 105 degrees C and a minimum lifetime rating of about a thousand hours. Some of them, most of them are about five thousand hours and some of them are as high as ten thousand hours and wherever possible I got low ESR caps too so these things should last probably longer than this amplifier will even be in service so I think I'm gonna get a little bit of improved performance and uh, lifetime expectancy out of this thing so Panasonic makes great stuff can't recommend them highly enough well, I got the amplifier back together, and I'm about to do a load test, so hopefully everything goes well. Got my oscilloscope over there, my DVM, my resistive load, and I'm going to apply a 315 hertz sine wave, and let's see what we get. I'm going to take it to the point where the amplifier starts clipping. Let's turn that down a little bit. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And we got 46.2 volts. Grab my phone real quick, make a calculation, see what we get. We got 266 watts, so not as much headroom as I was expecting, but I guess when you have emitter resistors and wire drops and transformers that aren't wound perfectly, that's what you're going to get. So the next thing to do is put this thing back together and do some music testing. But for now, I'm finished.
Thank you for watching. This amplifier repair has been a success.